I was just saying that you've been in Batman vs. Superman, Suicide Squad, and this, this is like the three biggest movies this year. That's true. I really just <laughs> ran through the other two, though. <laughs> I didn't stay long in but the still, frames of the other films. But, but still, sure. you have those three names on your IMDb page or yes. on your resume. I okay, mean, let's go. Yeah, yes. Get so, that resume together. Yes. So uh, well, how has this year been for you? It's been so much fun. It's so beautiful. Uh, so much exploration. Um, yeah, so many opportunities to, to play, you know. So perfect, a perfect year. I'm really, really so grateful for it. So did you, because I know some of the actors worked with J.K. Rowling on set, and some, like Colin never even met her. Did you right. work with her on this, or was she there? I her? was uh, very, very grateful to meet her. Uh, uh, one day when she was there was a day when, when I was also there. Um, and yeah, I mean, what an incredible opportunity, not just as an actor meeting the writer and getting to sort of, uh, you know, drink from that well um, and draw on information and get little secrets and things like this are, is enormously useful and, and fascinating, but also just as a fan, meeting yeah. one of my, my great heroes, you know, one of the, the most influential voices in my formative years and in my life. That's kind of crazy. It's a so, so bit. how big a fan were you of Harry Potter? I really mean, I big. guess you were like like a super fan, like a fanboy, like a like a maniacal, like a fanatical. So you would like sleep outside the theater for weeks before um, to get the tickets. N no, uh, my obsession was with the audiobooks. Oh. But I would certainly pre-order them online at the first available opportunity. Uh, and would wait for them eagerly, like go and check the mailbox long before it was possible that they would be there, that sort of thing, or as a kid you wait for the, uh, yeah. And yeah, would, would listen to the audiobooks almost every day of my life for several years, embarrassingly late into life. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so are you like into magic in general? Are you fascinated by it? Did you grow up with the magic set and those kind of things? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I think uh, the idea of magic fascinates all of us in, in, in one way or another, especially when we are children, we have such an access point to magic through our uh, imagination, um, which is a magical power in and of itself. Yeah, I, I certainly, I feel that magic is the true operational mode of the world. And I think that these stories are so wonderful because we exist in this fantastical imagination of what magic could be, but then ultimately we're always brought back to the true magic that we all partake of, uh, reminded again and again that the strongest magic, the highest magic is love, uh, oh. and again and again that it's, that it's friendship, you know, and that it's the, um, the moments uh, of decisiveness when someone chooses um, self-sacrifice to help someone else. I mean, these are true magics. And I think, um, I think that is a truth that can be found through a lot of the wisdom traditions of the world. Those uh, people who do practice magic, um, I think would agree with JK Rowling, you know. And I feel like this movie I was thinking afterwards is that there are like some other messages in this movie too, like, kind of, we should take care of the world better, the animals Certainly. and things like that. Is that, or is that, am I right thinking that? A hundred percent. I think there's uh, something at the root which has to do with how human beings have this dangerous tendency to separate ourselves from the world and the beings around us. Uh, and with separation, um, we lose awareness and with a loss of awareness, we become frightened. Because, and, and when we're frightened, we often uh, lash out or demonize or target what we're frightened of. And I think that, that we're, we're seeing that in this way. Um, she's showing us how even in the magical world, beautiful magical creatures are destroyed because they're feared. And 
uh, and that you know permeating all culture is this dangerous element of seeing someone else as completely separate from yourself, losing awareness of how those people are different, but at the root, always the same, and then demonizing and targeting other people um, are the, uh, the dangers in the world that J.K. Rowling seems to time and time again direct our attention to. And what a great time for this film to come out as Perfect. the yeah. situation is unbelievably dire. <clears throat> Um, we've, ha we've lost half the biodiversity on our planet. We're, so crazy. We are in the time that will decide, you know, 1.5 versus 2 degrees Celsius. You know, th this is whether or not our Earth will be hospitable, you know, uh, to any beings, any fantastical beasts, including ourselves. Um, and it's also a time when we see this horrifying thread of what I don't hesitate in calling neo-fascism, you know. Oh, wow. In the world. Yeah. And, and even, uh, you know, right there in our, in our uh, presidential election. Oh, God. And, you know, it, it, this is a really, this is a scary time. And it's a time when no matter what, no matter how quickly we can pull it together or turn around our, our you know, ship on this destructive path, we're still gonna really need each other. That's true. We're really gonna need each other in this coming time. It's not a joke, but. Three. Witches live among us. We've lived in the shadows for too long. Hi there, thanks for watching my interview. I hope you liked it, and if you did, there might be some other interviews you like on my channel, so please subscribe by clicking this button down here, and hopefully I'll see you again. Thanks again for watching. Bye.